you know, there has been some legislation that has come during the pandemic to promote uh, telehealth, just because we talked about that risk mitigation is very, very important. And the reimbursement has followed that as people have realized, payers have realized uh, the value of telehealth. And uh, the consolidated appropriations, what it does, extended the Medicare uh, waivers and it, it did other things too. But this waiver was something that um, was extended uh, to providers to see patients, even if the geographic area, the zip codes, you know, um, didn't really match because Medicare had some rules around that. So they they kind of allowed um, uh, patients to be seen in, in various settings, in rural settings. Um, they even had uh, uh, you know federally qualified health uh, centers and rural health centers serve as remote sites. Um, so there was a lot that was done uh, with the Medicare response to pandemic, and uh, the CAA kind of extended that for 151 days after the actual public health emergency period ended. Um, and my second point, which I kind of touched on, uh, is, is really, really important um, uh, that you could see Medicare patients uh, virtually anywhere. I mean, the, the, the location of the patient, even their home now qualified, which is typically what telemedicine has, is the, the patients at home. But um, nevertheless, the, the codes, uh, the updated fee schedule followed that were a lot more um, there was a lot more uh, ICD-10 codes and CPT uh, that were, uh, you know, reimbursable under Medicare rules. And as you know, Medicare, even though it's a government agency, a lot of private payers often follow or model uh, Medicare, um, you know, changes. For more information, click on the link below or visit databrackets.com.